This poem is uh, Mothers of Murdered Sons. This is for Mamie Till, who was Emmett Till's mother. Sabrina Fulton is Trayvon Martin's mother. Leslie McFadden, Mike Brown's mother. Women whose sons will be buried before them lose a lot of blood in delivery. Their water breaks torrentially, their bones go soft as yolk. Each contraction, a snatch in hand, a howl in a place they want to rub but can't reach a deliberate flood. The way a dam breaks and swallows a city, a woman's body is just like that. It can announce a funeral better than a gunshot can. For the women whose children are murdered, labor is foreshadow. It tells about the bones and the breaking and the temporary nature of things. Mamie Till laid up nine hours trying to pull that boy through her quaking thighs, sharpened her teeth on ice chips, whispered prayers that didn't belong to nobody's God, nipples like church steeples high and hard, reaching out to sky just to get that boy here. And he was a fat thing, too came up grinning and full of himself even then, came up gasping for air, came up from the thick heat of her body, smacking his lips, always hungry, see, always hungry. Took him a while to clean Emmett up, took even longer for Mamie to stop spilling every bit of herself in that stark white room. Took a while, see, and some of that blood ain't ever washed up. Ain't that a metaphor for always? Now, Sabrina Fulton is a ritual stony, stoic, her face don't move much, like a closed door with too many keyholes, no keys, each new sorrow a padlock welded shut, except her eyes keep stories even when she won't. Ever since her youngest boy got killed, you can't look her in the eyes if you do. Sabrina gonna bewitch you with her suffering, that ain't how she wants it, that's just how it is. Still, something needs to be said about how Trayvon's head just about split Sabrina in two. Looked like somebody was thundering out from under her with a hatchet in his hands. When I tell you she bled, you better know she bled. And they couldn't get it to stop. Doctor came in bellowing like Sabrina had something to do with how she was coming apart. Women keep their own magic, but you better believe God or something like it is involved when a son is being born. How you think a woman goes in as one but comes out as two? They say the last person to split himself like that was Jesus, ain't that right? You've been to Sunday school, you know, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, three in one, one in three. I'm trying to say women have always been about the otherworldly, super terrestrial mathematics of becoming more than themselves since before Eve. <laughs> Sabrina almost had to have a transfusion because that boy tore her up. So much blood looked like she didn't keep any of it for herself. Nurses and doctors running, trying to stop that woman from flooding the room with the red paint graffiti of sons who got to get here and can't figure out how to do it without tearing shit up first. Ain't that a metaphor for always? Now, Leslie, she doesn't come from anything that bends easily or apologizes much. She comes from something old. Her people split wood tapped trees, picked cotton, tried it, you know, tried getting to some place with plenty of work and public transportation and enough white folk who would look at you in the eye even if it was to spit in it. You've been hungry long enough, that's all the holy you know to look for. Leslie wasn't one of those girls who grew up thinking she could cry to get what she wanted. Fact is, she didn't even cry when she let her firstborn burst through her skin and he was a big one, like his daddy, I guess. Dark, thick-boned, like something made to be hunted, skinned, like something to be left bleeding outside in the middle of a road, caution tape everywhere, little kids squalling, old folks hollering, peace be still. And there Leslie was in the thick of it watching the boy she fought her own body for, the one who barely got out of high school, the one she alchemized from her simple womb, laid up, circusing the street with his blood, so much of it. Just like
like when he was born. And the doctors had to cut Leslie to pull him through. How her blood got in his eye. How it seemed like he never forgot the trauma of inheriting a body like the one he had. The boy whose blood started a riot. How we all ended up with it in our eyes. The mothers with murdered sons. Their prayers don't arrive in heaven no more. Could be they never did. And maybe God is a charlatan, pitching pennies to the sound of black boys, breaking the world with their bleeding. Maybe he's too busy with more righteous indignation. Maybe the melody ain't right. Not enough of the Eucharist in these boys to matter to the omnipresent and nevertheless absentee father. Maybe he's too busy with the mothers of school shooters. Maybe he's too busy to see he's not the only one with a murdered son. What about these, God? What about these?